Hi there, Malcolm here with my 14th video for Wernberg Games and today I'll be bringing you an unboxing for the new Terraforming Mars expansion Turmoil by Stronghold Games and Frix Games. And as I missed it when it came out, I also ordered along with the Kickstarter Colonies, which I'll unbox afterwards. For those who don't know, Terraforming Mars is a fantastic engine building game where players play cards in order to terraform the planet Mars by adding water, increasing the heat and the oxygen level. There's tile placement, area control, as well as having one of the strongest themes in a game I've ever seen. We then added several expansions. Preload, which gave you some extra cards at the beginning of the game and changed how each player got started. Venus Next, which added an extra board with Venus on it. It didn't add towards the uh, end goal, but it was another thing that players could do. Hellas and Elysium, which gave an extra double-sided board, which provided two extra maps of Mars for extra replay value. Colonies, which adds colonies, and the latest and possibly biggest expansion to date, Turmoil. So let's have a closer look. Instructions, always handy. One of my main motivations for backing this on Kickstarter was this fantastic Kickstarter reward. Dual layered playing boards. In the base game, players were given one of these flat, flimsy cardboard boards. On there, they would put their cubes which had to go in various different spaces where there's numbers and segments denoting what the cube's actually re representing. However, a slight table shuffle, a cat jumping on the table, or even a bare sneeze, and the cubes moved about very easily, making it very difficult for players to remember where the cubes were. All that will now change with these new improved dual layer boards. But now the cubes are held in the spaces they're placed, and I can actually tilt this a fair distance, and let's see how far I can go before it all drops out. Uh, let's turn it sideways, you can see. So that's pretty steep for them to even move. So a much better board. Really thrilled with these. And currently the only way you can get these is through the Kickstarter. I no doubt they'll be made available later on. I love this game and the player boards with a big letdown. So just reinstating, you will not get these in, in the box off the shelf. I'm sorry. But there are quite a few very good custom built ones that you can also buy. So very exciting, but not the main part of the game. Next up, there are five corporation cards. Each expansion gives you more corporations, thereby creating a much more variety for players to start off with. Again, increasing replay value. Players start off the game with a particular corporation. They get given two, they pick one. And the corporation will give them various benefits throughout the game. So we have Terra Labs, which has a science and an earth tag. It gives you the lowest starting money of all the corporations, uh, only 14. Normally it's around 50. But rather than having to spend three for each new card, you only need to spend one. So you get quite a big penalty at the beginning, but as the game progresses, you're spending far less on cards. So quite an interesting one there. Utopia Invest, which starts with a building tag, also gives you 40 mega credits and a steel and titanium production. And this one has an action ability, not many corporations do. These can be played once per generation. And here you can re reduce one of your production values and get four resources of that production. Pristar. Gets you quite a good payout at 53 mega credits at the beginning of the game, but you do drop your terraform rating, rating by two. And with this one, if you don't increase your terraform rating at all during the generation, you get six mega credits and a point on this card, which then scored at the end of the game. And finally, Lakefront Resorts, which starts off with a building tag, 54 mega credits. And whenever anyone places a water tile, you increase your money production by one. And when you place a tile next to water, you get three mega credits instead of two. So. They quite like water. Again, with all expansions, you get another nice wad of cards. And these are all directly tied to the Turmoil expansion. So if you ever decide to play the game without Turmoil, you'd have to remove these cards because they do nothing useful without the rest of it. I'm not going to go through them. I don't see any point of that. But lots of extra things to do. Now, again, because I kickstarted this game, I got some extra bonuses, including three extra corporations. So we've got Factorum with an energy and a building tag. You start with 37 credits and increase your steel production by one. And this one also has an action on it. If you have no energy resources, you can use this as an action to increase your energy production by one. Or if you need a new card, you can spend three mega credits and get yourself a new card from the deck. Then you've got Mons Insurance. This one has no tags, but it starts you with 48 mega credits. You increase your mega credit production by four, but you're in, you decrease everybody else's mega credit production by two. However, the strong starting advantage is outweighed because subsequently for the rest of the game, any time any player is forced to reduce production or lose resources due to another player's actions, you pay the victim three mega credits for their losses, if you can. So that's quite an interesting one. And then there's Filares with a building tag, 47 mega credits. 
and you can put a green tile out, increasing the oxygen level by one and your terraform rating by one. And anytime somebody plays a tile next to one of your tiles, you get a resource of your choice. And Septum Tribus, which gives you a wild tag, which each turn can be counted for anything, starts you with 36 mega credits and gets you two mega credits for each party you have at least one delegate. And that's the turmoil relevant part, which I'll get to in a minute. And there's also a whole bunch of extra cards from the Kickstarting campaign. And again, I'm not going to go through these. These are more generic and can be mixed in with the main game, except for one that does have the turmoil expansion mark underneath the premium expansion mark. That's 12 extra cards with 12 extra things to do. Lovely. So, so far, not much in the way of turmoil, although we have got a few cards that are linked to the turmoil expansion. So now we're going to move on to the turmoil expansion proper. So the turmoil expansion gets you two extra boards. If you've already got the Venus Next expansion and the Colonies expansion, table space is most likely getting quite tight. And these are only single layer, so things will slide about on them a bit. But because they're placed more in the middle of the table or next to the Martian map, they shouldn't get knocked as much as the player maps in front of players would do. Where we have the global event board and the committee board. The global event board comes with a bunch of cards, the brand new global event cards. And I think the backs of these are rather gorgeous. There's a whole mass of these new types of cards and each of these cards will affect the committee board twice in the game. The top part and then the middle part affecting these areas with the bottom area affecting all the players in some negative or positive way. So for this one, each player will lose three mega credits for each space tag they have. Regardless if it's good or bad, there is a safety net meaning that that only happens up to five occurrences, which could then be jiggled up and down according to how the committee board is working. Uh, so on the committee board, players can have up to three influence, and so this, uh, this number of five can be increased up to eight, or brought down to two, depending on which way you'd rather go. So potentially, where well, you have to pay 15 credits here, if you have an influence of three, you could reduce that down to just having to pay six. And the Kickstarter also gave me some extra global events to go with it which is nice. And the cards go on these three spaces telling you what's coming up, what's imminent and what is actually happening. So you, you do get a little forewarning as to what's going to happen in the next in the turns coming up. And there's a whole bunch of information at the top just reminding players how they play with this new set of rules. They're not complicated, it's just nice having that as a reminder. Now on the surface the committee board looks like a real turn off to the game. You know, with a name like Committee Board, and at the top you've got Policy, Delegate Reserve, as a Lobby, and around the outside you've got six political parties. Chairs for the six party leaders, and a chair for the chairman of the, of the government. Sounds all very dry and boring. So in the policy area, we can place these six rather wonderfully crafted tokens, and these basically show off which party is the ruling party at the time. It'll change each generation, and each party adds an extra bonus for all players. Other parties are Mars first. This party is all about Martian development and independence. So when they become the dominant party, all players receive one mega credit for each building tag they have in play. And while they are in power, every time a player plays a tile, they get given one steel resource for their efforts. Then there's the scientist party, who surprisingly enough are very interested in research and development. And if they come to power, all the players receive one, one mega credit for each science tag they have. And while they're in power, a player may pay 10 mega credits to get three fresh cards. They can only do it once in a generation, but each player may have a go at it if they wanted to. Unity are looking beyond Mars. They want humanity to, to prosper throughout the entire solar system. And when they come to power, players receive one mega credit for each Earth, Venus and Jovian tag they have in play. And while they're in power, titanium resources are worth an extra mega credit. They're usually worth three. This makes them worth four, plus whatever other bonuses players may have played. Kelvinists are about terraforming Mars via heat, and so players will receive one mega credit for each heat production they have going for them when these guys come into power. And this allows players to pay 10 mega credits to increase their heat and energy production by one step. And there is no restriction to this, they can do it as many times as they like during a generation, as long as they can afford it. At the polar opposite of Mars first are the Reds, and they want to preserve Mars and its natural glory and are very much against the terraforming of Mars. And when they come to power, the player who is in last place, the lowest terraform rating, gains a terraform rating. And while they're in power, if ever a player increases their terraform rating, they have to pay three mega credits each time they do so. If they can't pay, they can't increase. And then there's the Green Party, who are all about making a new Earth. They want to see a very green planet. And when they come to power, players gain one mega credit for each animal, microbe and plant tag they have. And they get paid four mega credits each time they play a green tile. 
This is also the dominant party at the beginning of the game. To go with their usual starting cubes, players are also given these wonderful politician busts complete with ties. I don't know if you can quite see that in their colour. And players can play the delicates to the various uh, parties that they wish. They get one free go each generation and subsequent delegates cost five mega credits each to place and they get seven dele delegates to play with. The player with the most delegates in a party gets to place their delegate on the party leader chair and the party with the most delegates in all is the delegate that's going to be the dominant delegate in the following generation and the player with the most delegates in that party gets to place their delegate in the chairman seat. There are also a whole pile of non-player delegates and they get played according to these tags here. So that's the science party and another science party. There's a red and a union. So where players can actually choose where the, their delegates go, there's also a random element in terms of the non-player delegates. At the end of the generation, the new ruling party's policy is put on the stack here. All the delegates are removed from the ruling party and placed back in the reserves. And there's another white cube, which is used to, to indicate which party is the dominant one. And that will then change to the new dominant. But certainly if it looks like those annoying pesky reds are beginning to get, into too, are beginning to get too powerful, yeah, it might be worth voting for the Green Party or the Blue Party or any of the other parties. Or jumping on the bandwagon and putting more delegates into the Red Party so when they do inevitably get into power, you're in charge of them and you get the full benefit of it. When you become party leader and chairman, you get extra Terraform rating points. So you have party benefits, changeable global events, as well as all the cards that players have played. It does add further complexity, but without making it any more difficult. It does seem to slot in nicely with all the other expansions. Yes, there's new things to do, but because there are benefits from having done them, you'll get extra resources or mega credits, meaning you're more likely to do extra actions in each generation anyway. So I was actually quite surprised by this, because I thought that all the politics would be rather dry and uninteresting. But like with the rest of Terraforming Mars, there are hidden depths to it, and it is wonderful. There are also two handy crib sheets as well, just so that players who can't quite see the board clearly can refer for what parties do when they come into power and while they're in power. So a nice little touch there. Finally, there's a little tile to replace the milestone terraform rating area. In the base game, players can claim the milestone of 35 terraform rating if they get there first. With all the crazy add-ons, that's not so easy to achieve. So you can slot that over the top to make it a much more achievable 26. Right, that was turmoil. Colonies now. This has been out for a little while, so you may have already seen that one. You're pretty much forgiven if you don't want to sit through this. Feel free to move on to other videos if you've already got this or you're not interested. So, colonies. Rule book. Hooray! So, more corporations. That's five again. So we have Arclight, which gives you an animal tag. 45 starting mega credit and a money production increase of two. And whenever you play an animal or plant tag during the game, including this card, you put an animal on here. And at the end of the game, this is worth one point for every two animals you have. Arador has no tags, but gives you 40 mega credits to start off with and puts an extra colony tile out. Normally there are only two more colony tiles out than there are players. This will make it three more. More choice, more options, nice. And this also has an ongoing effect of every time you play a new tag that you haven't already played before, you increase your mining production by one, nice. Polyphemus, no tags again. Gives you 50 mega credits, a money production increase of five, and five titanium resources. So a nice wad of cash to start off with, but all new cards cost five mega credits, not three. And that's including your starting hand. So, ouch. Stormcraft Incorporated gets you a Jovian tag, 48 mega credits, and as an action, you can put Floater on any card. And Floater on this card can be used as if there were two heat resources each. And then there's Poseidon, no tags again, 45 mega credits, and you get to place a colony as your first action. And each time you do place a colony, including this one, you increase your money production by one. There's a fat wadge of new cards here, more things to do. Some of them are relevant to the, the um, expansion and some of them are more generic. So lots and lots of extra fun. So on to the actual expansion itself. So here are the colonies in these lovely oval tokens. Each one features a moon or dwarf planet. So there's Europa, for example, Pluto, and so on. Oh, what I like about this is that each of the pictures are drawn to scale. So you can see just how small Pluto is when you compare it to Europa, for example. And each one has a nice little bit of information about them as well. How these work, at the beginning of the game, a white cube is placed in the white square zone to denote the current trade market of this colony. For 17 mega credits, a player may place one of their cubes on the lowest score on the track. And you can see only the first three 
spaces on the track have a benefit from doing so in this case that player would increase their energy production by one and only three players may settle on this colony and the same player can't colonize twice on the same colony then for nine mega credits all three energy all three titanium players may fly their one funky little uh, triangular spaceship with their little cube on it off of this starting board and visit the colony for trade and depending where the white cube is on this track it's moved up by players placing their cubes on the track or each generation it moves up one space anyway so if it's here above the seven you'd get seven energy cubes but all the players who are already on this colony will also get a colony bonus of in this case three energy cubes for just being there each colony has a different focus so titan is all about floaters europa is very much on terraforming so you get water tiles when you colonize with money heat or plants depending on how high the uh, trade value is triton is all about titanium Callisto, if you've already seen, is all about energy. Luna is all about money. Miranda gives you animal cubes with a nice card as a colony bonus. Pluto is all about cards. So if you colonize, you get two cards. If you trade, you trade, you, you get that many cards, up to four. And as your colony bonus while trading is going on, you can pick up a new card and discard a card. Io does heat. Enceladus does microbes. Ceres does steel and steel production. And Ganymede is all about plants. So again, like with Turmoil, if you've already got the other expansions, you might find you're running out of free space on your table because you have this card where you put your trade fleets on to start off with, which also tells you how much things cost and reminds you how they work. There's a reference card for players at the other side of the table who can't read all that. And then you can have up to eight of these jolly things sitting about the table as well. Not to mention your Martian board, your Venus board, the player boards, or all the cards you've played out in front of you, laid out in such a way so you can see the tags as well as the two extra boards from Turmoil. But another really nice expansion. Really looking to play the whole thing. So there you go, there's my unboxing for Turmoil and Colonies. Have you played Terraforming Mars? Have you got any of the expansions? Do you have a favourite one? Do you have a least favourite one? Is the one you won't get? Or are you perfectly happy with the basic game? I'd love to know, so please do answer below. If you like this video and want to see more like this, then please let me know. Now, a thumbs up is a good indication of that, or a friendly comment. I do want to try and do more gaming videos, so do let me know what you'd like to see. Check out my website to see what I've got. Obviously, I can only show off what I actually have. And what game do you have to have every single expansion going for it? As usual, if you have nothing nice to say, then please do keep it to yourself. And until next time, see you later.